Good morning and welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. My name is Pastor William Hill, the pastor of Providence Presbyterian Church located in Evansville, Indiana. We are a congregation of the Presbyterian Church in America. Today is Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022. This is edition number 32 of season 5 in which we are going through the book of Genesis. Today we come to chapter 32. Let's pray together and then we'll consider this chapter together this morning. Let's pray. Father, as we come now to your word and we come to a chapter that we know well and uh, we see the extreme value and importance of this chapter, we pray that you would teach us by your word, you would teach us by your spirit. We ask that you'd help us and forgive us for our many transgressions and our sins that we commit before you. We thank you for your providence and the way you work in our lives. And we ask that you continue, that you would strengthen and persevere your people and that you would help us that we might faithfully serve you. May you use your word uh, to encourage and edify your people even this morning, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, we come to chapter 32 now, this very important chapter in which uh, after the events of, uh, of the pursuit of Laban and that which um, it, it, it accomplished, what it did, of course, it was a, a time of great opposition, but God was with Jacob. Now we note another opposition that comes against Jacob in chapter 32, this one probably more fierce than the one of his uncle, but Jacob is about uh, it, to face his own brother Esau. Now we know from the events of the past uh, that Esau loathed his brother Jacob. Uh, one of the last words that were ringing in the ears of Jacob as he fled uh, to his uncle was that Esau would, was planning to kill his brother for stealing his birthright, for stealing, <clears throat> for stealing the blessing uh, that was his as the oldest brother. And so Jacob naturally fears um, Esau, and that is <clears throat> given to us in the opening verses of really verses 1 <clears throat> through 21 as Jacob makes plans uh, to defend his own family. And so we read in verse 1, Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's camp. So he called the name of that place Mahanim. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Seir, the country of Edom. Now this is a very important underscore. Uh, later we will see why. Uh, but just in brief, Edom is a bitter enemy of Israel or will become a bitter enemy of Israel. And Esau is at the head of that. But anyway, he sends these messengers before his brother in the country of Edom, instructing them, Thus you shall say to my lord Esau, Thus says your servant Jacob. Notice the relationship. You know, Jacob is really bargaining. He is, uh, he is in the place of, of disadvantage, and he is hopeful to find favor with his brother. I have, so, I have sojourned with Naboth and stayed until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, male servants, and female servants. I have sent to tell my Lord in order that I may find favor in your sight. And so the messengers return to Jacob with um, news that he's coming to meet you, and there are 400 men with him. And Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. And this fear uh, leads Jacob to pray. And he says, and this is where it, things start to turn very much so in the life of Jacob, where he begins to really embrace the God of heaven. Verse 9, Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O Lord, who said to me, Return to your country and to your kindred that I may do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all the deeds of steadfast love and all the faithfulness that you have shown to your servant. For with only my staff I crossed this Jordan, and now I have become two camps. Please deliver me from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, that he may come and attack me. The mothers with the children. But you said, I will surely do you good and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. So there's some things to note here, of course. Uh, Jacob is in prayer. He finds himself in great distress. He finds himself at dis in a disadvantage. And he does what we must do uh, with our own lives. Uh, we, we are exiles in this world. We face many enemies. We face many threats. We face many opponents. We face many enemies of the gospel, many enemies of the Lord Jesus Christ. We must be people of prayer. We must turn to the Lord in prayer on a regular basis. We must plead for help. We must remind God of his promises. This is what Jacob does. This is what pr true prayer looks like. 
It is not merely asking and wishing for things, but it is reminding God of the things that God has said. It is as a, as a lawyer standing before a just judge, the God of heaven, and pleading your case, the case that God himself has offered and made. And this is precisely what Jacob does. For he says that I, you said, I will surely do you good and make you your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. And indeed, God had said that. He also appeals to the kindness of God, recognizing that he's not worthy of God's grace. Uh, for if grace were something we could earn, it wouldn't be grace. It would destroy the whole definition of grace. But Jacob appeals to the grace of God. He has noted how God has cared for him all of these years, his, his providence working for his good, how he's blessed him abundantly with children and with wives and with many material possessions of this life. And so he prays and he pleads with God for help. And then we come to chapter 22 where Jacob wrestles with God all the way through the evening. This is a, very much a picture of prayer. We note that the same night he arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven children and crossed the fort of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and everything else that he had. Now this is in comp keeping with the plans that were made and from verses 13 through 21. And Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he says, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. And Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his, of his hip. Therefore to this day the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the thigh that is in the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip on the sinew of the of the thigh. Now here, Jacob calls this place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. In this all-night e event, encounter with the Most High, God, w Jacob witnesses the very face of God. Peniel, the, the place there, means face of God, and Jacob's encounter with God fills him with awe, at least according to one commentator. When later Moses asked to see God's glory, he is told, You cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. In light, of this, in light of this, either Jacob's encounter is a remarkable exception, or alternatively, the expression face-to-face -face should be understood as a figure of speech for intimacy with God. In Exodus 33.11, God speaks to Moses face-to-face, -face, but in both cases the phrase can imply a close personal encounter or possibly a vision of the brightness of God's glory without suggesting a literal vision of God's face. And so there, during Jacob's determination to be blessed, uh, he, um, he meets the God of heaven. And as we pray, there are times when we must continue laboring in prayer. Oftentimes we find ourselves, we get caught up in the, working through a prayer list, working through a checklist of our, in our prayer life, and there's nothing wrong with those things. But we pray, we finish, we're done. And there may be times in our lives when we must labor much further. We must labor on until God blesses us. We must remain in our prayer closet until God does a mighty work in our own hearts and our own minds. This is what Jacob is seeking. He knows uh, ultimately who he's dealing with because he is told, indeed, that he has striven with God and with men and have prevailed. And he has renamed Israel, and of course we know where that is going, of course, as the he is the head of Israel and his 12 sons, the 12 tribes of Israel. But Jacob here <clears throat> labors all night in prayer, pleading with the God of heaven for blessing, that God might be good and favorable to him, especially in the in light of this very serious event that is coming uh, to him, and that is the, in the meeting of his brother Esau. This is a much more great, this is a greater threat than even the one of Laban, uh, for indeed Esau. His last words were one of threat. And Jacob does receive the blessing of God. 
Uh, we know that through the renaming of the name. We know that in, in the expression, how he has seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. That is to say, he was not struck down. He was not killed for seeing God. He was indeed blessed of God. And as we continue through the narrative, we will note how God continues to bless this servant of the Lord in bringing many uh, to his own side. Well, I trust these times are helpful for you. I hope they are. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave me a note. The way to contact me is there before you on the screen. And so until Wednesday, when we, when we uh, consider chapter 33 and the events that take place in the meeting of es uh, Jacob's family, meeting I Esau, may the Lord help you today. May he go before you. May you serve him. And may he defend you. May he bless you with many good things. God bless.